So I'm here today with my friend Joel Kepler and we are at SMC, Stecker Machine Company. And right now, Joel, we're standing in a massive cell with a giant 800 mil JTAC machine. We've got robots, we've got automation, but I understand that we didn't start here, that it started as a more manual operation for this cell. How did we get here to all of this? Well, we started out with a manual cell for the customer and um, everything was fine with that. Our processing time in the machine was lower so the operators could keep up. Then they asked us how we could increase our output by about 50%. So we wow. looked at automation and we tried to figure out what operations took the longest for the operators so we wouldn't have to add another operator. At the same time, we looked for a different machining process that would be able to output more. Yeah, so the customer loved your parts so much. It's a great <laughs> problem to have right. that you then had to, to work with your supply chain partners. So you reached out then to State or who did you reach out to when you started that conversation? Yeah, so State Machine helped us out. They're a good partner with us. Um, we have a lot of smart people here and they have a lot of smart people there. So we challenge each other, we collaborate on things like this, come up with yeah. good ideas, and it all came together with this. We weren't even sure if we could do it with a torquing cell and found out that we could with their help. Yeah, so let's talk a little bit more about the automation because this robot's not just loading and unloading the machines. Right. So what, what does the robot take care of here in this cell? So the robot torques down the caps on the part to the proper torque. I think each one, each bolt gets torqued three or four different times to get up to the proper torque. Yeah. Then it also t takes the bolts back out um, when it comes back out of the cell for the final assembly. So I believe that there's well somewhere around 50 bolts that have to be torqued. Okay. And so by the time you do that four times, it, I think the robot takes 15 minutes to do it. So that's the operator time that's saved by doing it this way. Yeah, and I was talking to Dan a little bit earlier when we were going around, and one of the things he mentioned is that the robot replicates the exact same torque pattern that the end user does. So you know when they're leaving this cell, they're right. arriving to your customer exactly how they're gonna use it, exactly how they're gonna assemble it, yep. and everything's kind of matched together here in assembly so that it goes together on the other end. Yep, and that's also critical for the board sizes so that when they retorque them, they end up at the same bore size. The t tolerances are very tight for on the engine, so it has to be the same here as what they put on the engine. And something Dan said that kind of stuck out is even the pallet system over here on the 800, it kind of has like a floating mechanism in it to help align all of the line boring because this is a massive casting and you've got to hold that bore within 35 microns from end to end yep. and, and have it all line up for your customer. Right, yep, yep. So we. That was part of the new process is it's more repeatable because it has guides in the process. Yeah. Whereas before we had to make some adjustments more often. So it not only runs faster, it's also more reliable. So you've got better reliability. You've got higher quality coming out. You're able to meet the needs of your customers. Yep. It sounds like this is a partnership that's just like a win-win-win situation. Right, absolutely. And State Machine also supported us with improving the machining process. That's something here as I'm getting to know the people at SMC, it's just such a rare mindset that you guys bring to the equation mm -hmm. when you're looking to get something done and you're looking to get parts out the door. Yep. You come with a great problem, like our parts are so amazing, everybody wants more of them. Mm -hmm. How do we make that happen? Right. And then you figure it out. Yeah, and I think, uh, like I said, we have a lot of smart people here and we come up with a lot of ideas that we don't even know if are possible. Yeah. So that's why we partner with exceptional places like states so that we can come up with, okay, here's a solution. Can you do this? They yeah. say, yep, we can do it. Sometimes we work back and forth and I honestly believe we make make each other smarter. Yeah, well, and then it sounds like you guys get to focus on what you're best at, they get to focus on what they're best at and you yep. come together and everybody wins. Yep, absolutely. Awesome, thanks Joel. Yep.